listeners, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How are you oh, this pre- week? I'm pretty good. It's been a little bit since we've actually sat here because we did the early thing last week. Oh, yeah. That's the reason this feels so weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we're a day late, sort of. Yeah. I mean, we had the extra day. We took an extra day. We t- <laughs> took an extra day coming back in. Yeah. Um, you know, some things haven't changed. Uh, my left arm doesn't work, but at least I almost look like a normal human being again. So that's, you know. All right. Yeah. Uh, Take your wins where you can get them, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, just been talking about, you know, attitude. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> Keep them positive. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, as uh, well. Yeah, there's so much to that, too, like just the whole positive attitude thing. Mm-hmm. I think about that show. We only watched the first episode. Um, oh, what was the name of that? It was One Something, One Piece. Oh, yeah, that we yeah we watched yeah. the pilot or whatever. Yeah, that character in there, just like always so happy-go-lucky. Like, yeah. I don't know. All right, sure, whatever, cool. Yeah, right? <laughs> like, oh, I love that attitude. Though. Yeah, like, and I, I do too. Like, I really try to be that person as much as I can. Like, you know, it's... Yeah, I would like to employ that a lot more than I do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I, I tend to overanalyze, and so yeah, it gets me into bad places sometimes. Yeah. But, yeah, you just you try and recognize it and move on. Try and find the humor in in the things. Yeah. Like, that's, you know, that's probably the best way. Even Like, even, like, the dark humor, you know what we've got going on. Like what we're talking, all this stuff that we're talking about today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got a load of it today, so, right? So try, yeah. Try and smile while you're listening to this and maybe, I don't know. It'll, well, if it'll help. smile on the fact that, you know, that you can't control it. Like it's, you need, yeah. you need to be aware and you need to know, but it, you don't need to stress about it because you have zero control over what's going on politically. Yeah, that's true. In general, like, you know, so there's, there's no sense in like, like in the, beating in the, yourself up or like stressing yourself over the stuff. Like that's not like, I'm, and I'm all for being informed and, and like, and like taking action where you can, mm-hmm. but just know like this stuff's out of your hands, you know? Yeah. yeah. If you want change, you need real like big change. Yeah. And and, it, and I, it's not like change, you, you can't change. convince enough people to do that because they're all scared. Well, change bigger than what one person can accomplish anyway. Oh yeah, well that's yeah. certainly true. But I mean, like in terms of in terms of the political parties issue. Yeah. Um. There's. Yeah, it's it's more than what one person as a single voter can change, but um, like one person as president can change a whole lot. Well, it just you're not going to get it out of that's true but you're not going to an RRD. Well that's just it. Yeah. Exactly. I mean you've got to like break the the cycle to really Yeah. And too many people are too afraid to go outside the box a little bit and and find something else. Yeah. I think um you know it's rather <laughs> I don't know. You see this in relationships sometimes too. The people would rather go back to an abusive relationship that they're familiar with than, um, than a new relationship that's going well, but there's, it's st- like the future of that's still a mystery. Yeah. Like at least, you know what you're going back to. Yeah. You know, yeah. P- the, a preference for the familiar than the, uh, over the unknown, yeah. even if the familiar isn't that great. Yeah. No, there's definitely something to that. Yeah. Um, at least that's how it was explained to me by some girl long ago when I was asking like, why the hell do (laughs) people make these terrible decisions? Yeah. Familiarity was the answer. I was like, okay, I can, I can see that. I can, I I can at least understand that Yeah, on some level at least. Yeah. 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 The, the mystery of the unknown is, is, um, scary. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I thought we'd actually start with just like a general, (coughs) discussion of sanctions because we we bring up sanctions a lot yeah well i don't know sanctions are employed a lot and so it got me thinking like just how frequently are sanctions employed by the u.s and we've been talking about the BRICS, you know the people trying to establish a an alternative economic system to the the world economic system that the u.s controls um because the u.s uses it as a weapon yeah 
And uh, so I started, I started looking some things up, and I was kind of surprised at what I found on a couple of levels. Um, so active United States economic sanctions uh, affect countries and people within, like major figures within, 26 different nations. Really? Yeah. That's about 13% of the total nations on Earth. <laughs> All right. And since it includes... Nations like China and Russia and some fairly large the big guys, yeah. nations. Um, it actually covers roughly 30% of the world population oh, wow. is subject in one way or another to U.S. sanctions. Wow. That's, that's pretty that's steep. Yeah. Um, and the, the thing to remember about sanctions is that they're, I mean, they're kind of terroristic, but leaving that aside, yeah. um, the real target is civilian population. Yeah, it, it's to make the civilian population so miserable that they affect a political change. Yeah, um, so it is actually targeting innocent people. That's oh, the whole that is the entire purpose. That's that's yeah. And the the interesting thing about it, you got TV again, huh? I tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, the interesting thing about it is that it doesn't just affect the target nation; it also affects the implementing nation. Yeah. Um, Sometimes to a lesser degree, but not always. And yeah. so I thought the like a good example of how U.S. economic sanctions adversely affect the lives of U.S. citizens is uh, sanctions on Venezuela and Russia. Okay. All right. So you have sanctions on Venezuela and Russia and Iran. We can add them in later, though, because I don't have good numbers on how that impacts things. But yeah. Um, just by sanctioning Venezuela and Russia, the U.S. has cut itself off from uh, roughly 10% of its oil imports. Yeah. Which, of course, affects oil prices. Yeah. Which affect fuel and energy prices, which affect everything else. Yeah, exactly. So um, through the U.S. economic sanctions, they've raised prices for everybody in the U.S., which, of course, affects most harshly people with low incomes yeah uh so the people that are already the worst off in the u.s are most affected by this right. and that's the, the same is true in the other nation too oh yeah uh, of course but the the interesting thing about it is that it really doesn't prevent it's not like venezuela is not selling its oil and russia is not selling its oil they're just selling it to somebody else yeah. they're just creating inefficiencies in the system in the market system, which is what government does, I guess. Yeah. It's like, apparently the primary role of government is to create <laughs> inefficiencies in the market system. Yeah. Um, so it just raises prices for everybody. Yeah. Everybody. And it doesn't really affect the government that it's supposed to affect. Yeah. On their side or ours, really. Um, and then, so then Iran is obviously heavily sanctioned as well. Yeah. And Iran's a huge oil producer. So how much of a difference could that make as well if that was... Well, what's, what's almost even worse about this is not just the fact that, okay, we've got sanctions against these countries and we won't buy their product. It's that, that we retaliate against the countries that still choose to buy their product. Mm -hmm. So like that's a whole other layer of this that you've got to kind of consider is like not just the fact that, oh, well, we won't buy Iranian oil or whatever. Is that we won't let other people buy it either. Yeah, at well, least we, we at least at least sanction them as well. Well, yeah, at least mm -hmm. they they go on the block too when they try to purchase the stuff. Right. So. Well, I it's of and course it one of the, that doesn't make friends across the world. <laughs> by the way, yeah. like that's that's not making the people of the of the world like, oh man, USA is great. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't help our image very much. We just look like a bully. Yeah. Um. I mean. We don't need economic sanctions, though, to do that. Do yeah. we? We, well, we, well, well, it's, it's just around. one way of us yeah. being that bully. Another. I mean, we've got a military presence in 80 of 190 whatever nations. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, they know us. Yeah. Um, so it's just like probably the most obvious aspect of economic war. Of course, you know, the other big one um, is tariffs and, and those kind of things. Yeah. But uh, sanctions is, is the most overt form of economic war. Well, and they always, like the media will always proclaim it as, as like the best option. 
Like mm-hmm. any time they're talking about, well, you know, we we thought about taking military ap- action. Like how many times has this happened under Trump? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we, we, we considered military action, but we settled on sanctions. Yeah. Like sanctions was the better option. And mm-hmm. then it's paraded in the in the media like, oh, well, at least at least we didn't it's go to— It's the humanitarian version yeah, of the war. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like this this was a much, much better option for everybody, you know. Yeah. When, but we're not going not, over there and killing people. Instead, we're staying here and killing people in a worse way. Yeah. Exactly. We're just starving them yeah, to death. We're starving them instead of blowing them up. Exactly. Like, <laughs> um, are you drinking coffee and whiskey? Oh man, I'm having a blast over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, okay. So I, I had heard, I think it was, uh, I think it was Austin Peterson actually oh, I like that, that I heard this from. Yeah. He may have gotten it from somewhere else, and and when I'm trying to think back on it, I think that he was reading somebody else's article or referring to somebody else's article. But I, I've heard economic war as being something like that. This would be the sort of exchange that you would have, um, where nation A threatens nation B and says, "If you don't stop what we're doing, what you're doing, we're going to kill five percent of our population." <laughs> yeah. And nation B says. If you kill 5% of your population, then we'll kill 10% of ours. Yeah, all right. <laughs> and Nation A says, if you kill 10% of your population, we have no choice but to kill 15% of our population. Yeah. And, and th- this it is, just escalates. Yeah, yeah. And this is essentially the way economic war works is that you're actually punishing your own people. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> and and that's like particularly with the Russia situation, mm-hmm. like that's... And, like we're very open about that. Like mm-hmm. at least this, it seems like this is the time this this particular round of sanctions and the escalation we've got with Russia right now is particularly that's as as apparent as it can be because mm-hmm. you even have Biden and these people going out. Well, we know this is going to be tough, but we have to put it to Russia. Yeah. Like it, it feels like there's at least more of an admission than ever that, yeah, we're going to take some pain here too, but that we have to take this pain to give this pain to Russia. Yeah. To the people of Russia. To the people of Russia. We feel like we can break the people of Russia. Yeah, exactly. Into um, overthrowing their leader. Which, by the way, like history will like stand this out as solidly as it can. Like that never works. Yeah. Like you never sanction a country so much that it, I mean, it turns on its government. I mean, if it turns on its government, it was already going to in the first place. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, what it generally does is it become it, it, it provides a scapegoat for that government. Yeah. To say, things are so bad for you because of the U.S. sanctions. And that works. Yeah. Like it, well, and it's mostly, it's essentially correct. Well, it is essentially <laughs> correct, but at the same time, like it, like the rally to the flag is real. Mm-hmm. Like when, when you think that another country is coming after you, like patriotism becomes just rampant yeah. for good reason. Like I'm not even saying that that's a bad thing, yeah. but it w- you would think that a government as advanced as ours would on some level recognize that, mm-hmm. that, that this doesn't benefit, this doesn't benefit our means to an end. I think it, that it's just meant to be a provocation for us really. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's not intended to avert war. It's intended to be a prelude to, yeah, uh, I I don't know that for sure, but that's well, that's my sense. It of almost that. seems like it has to be because there's no way that the people like pulling the levers don't recognize this. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I my my other experience is that the people pulling those levers tend to not be real bright. Well, <laughs> you may. I mean, they they'd have to not be. <laughs> yeah. What's the um the expression like? Uh, you know, never attribute to. Um, to evil, what can be attributed to incompetence or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's yeah. definitely something to that. <laughs> um, so speaking of, yeah, we just gave $6 billion to Iran. Yeah. If you listen to media, that's what you hear. <laughs> yeah. We, we just gave $6 billion dollars to Iran. We just paid Iran Six billion dollars to they're get g- five U.S. citizens. No, no, no. But they agreed that they were not going to use that for their nuclear program. 
that doesn't exist. <laughs> well, that's that's what the media keeps saying, though. Like they have, we have, we have solid agreements that they're not going to use this towards their nuclear program. Like, well, that makes perfect sense to me because they don't have one. because it doesn't exist, right? Yeah. They don't <laughs> but, have one. Like it's, I'm just it's, telling it's you, it's really well documented at this point. People like there's entire books about this. There's a, a book by uh, Gareth Porter called Manufactured Crisis about the the myth of the. Iran nuclear program. Yeah. Um, there was a national intelligence uh, assessment just recently that said that Iran did not have an active nuclear program and may never have had an active nuclear program. Yeah. Um, the only thing that Iran discussed it at some point, like there's some, some papers where they were kicking around the idea yeah. of starting a nuclear program, yeah. but they never did start a, a military, a, a weapon, a nuclear weapons program. Yeah. But they I just have the, the uh, civilian program, energy program. I swear I had heard Benjamin Netanyahu say that they were six months away from having the bomb. Yep, and he like, started saying that 20 years ago, and he's like, still saying it today. But uh, I was going to say, I know I've heard him say that. Yeah, you, you definitely have. <laughs> yeah. But he's a liar. <laughs> Is he? Yeah. yeah he's yeah. a liar. Well, I mean, he's know. a politician. He, I was fixing to say, yeah. But you repeat yourself. Yes. Um, so, yeah, there is no <laughs> Iran nuclear program. But... The thing that just that drives me crazy about this, uh, first off, so I, <laughs> I went, uh, Kirby, um, Admiral Kirby, retired Admiral Kirby, uh, who's the spokesperson for the Pentagon, he was on Fox, but I couldn't see what he was saying. All I could read was the Chiron and so forth when I was coming back from Ohio Yeah. Uh, while I was in the airport, because there was a lot of sitting in airports. Imagine that was on CNN then. No, it was on uh, oh, Fox. Oh, you, you said it was on Fox. Yeah, I just on, I yeah. thought like all the airports played nothing but CNN. That's how they got their numbers up. Well, at this CNN. is in Hearts at Hartsfield. Okay. Uh, it may have. I don't know. Right, um, just, but it was definitely Fox. Yeah. Okay. Unless CNN was playing a clip from Fox. It's possible. I definitely saw the Fox logo. Logo. Okay. So I, I couldn't hear what he was saying, but there was like a whole bunch of like negative stuff on the screen. Yeah. Um, which made it seem like Kirby was being uh, critical of the Biden administration's agreement with Iran to trade five prisoners each and release the $6 billion. Yeah. Um, so I went hunting on Fox News' YouTube channel, which is a terrible place. <laughs> terrible place. I get it, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, for this clip. I, I wanted yeah. to hear what Kirby was saying. Yeah. I couldn't find it. Um, but I did find Nikki Haley. Oh yeah. <laughs> Maybe even better. Right? And so I thought, let's see what Nikki Haley has to say about this. Yeah, I can imagine. And Nikki Haley said that it was irresponsible to make this deal. And the, the Biden administration had just put a bounty on every American head. Um, all of our military that's in other countries and our, you know, people working at embassies and so forth, like now they're all under threat because any of our enemies will just, it feels like they can get $1.2 billion for every American that they capture. Yeah. All right. Which I think is, is just a ridiculous <laughs> argument to start with. <laughs> that but, argument just is, yeah. But here's the important thing. And, you know, we, we had to go over this last time that we quote unquote paid off Iran for something. Yeah. It's their money. <laughs> we and this is why it connects it. <laughs> yeah, it, this is why it connects back to the US controlled global economic system. Yeah. Is that it was Iranian money that the US froze. It was yeah. Iranian assets that the US wouldn't release to to them. Yeah. And they agreed to release Iranian money back to Iran. And then I was thinking like how can I get people to understand what this is like. And I thought, all right, so if the federal government overcharges you for taxes yeah, and, and then it's discovered and you say, Hey, you overcharged me for taxes and they send you a check for the amount of money that they took from you that they shouldn't have. Yeah. Do you say the U S government gave me this money? <laughs> and I thought that would be a good example, except that, that's exactly what people say when they get their tax refund every year. I was fixing year. to say, yeah, exactly. That's, I, I hear it all the time. <laughs> I, I, I explain it to them when, whenever I hear it. It's like, oh, man, like I finally got my tax refund. And I got all this money. I was like, dude, it was your money. Yeah. You, you like, just want to say, no, dumbass. You just got your money back. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. And congratulations. Like, I'm happy for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but it was always your money. But it's the same thing here. This was Iran's money. They just got their money back. Yeah. It's not taxpayer money that went to Iran. We they finally got off their Iran. tax refund. Yeah, they finally got their tax <laughs> refund. Exactly. So, uh, but the other part of this that I just get so frustrated about is, all right, Nikki Haley, what's your alternative? Yeah. What do you think that the Biden administration should have done? What would Nikki Haley have done? Would Nikki Haley have just left five American citizens in an Iranian prison? Would I Nikki mean, Haley have sent special forces to go bust them out? <laughs> Which I feel like is something that she might have done. Actually considered, yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, it Nick, may have been on the table. Would Nikki Haley start a new war with Iran well, because of our citizens that they had... I think the the last one leads to that one. Like I think, yeah, Nikki <laughs> Haley sends in the special forces and ensues the next war. <laughs> yeah, or she might just skip the fe- special forces part and just start a war. Just she start might a just war, use yeah. it as an excuse. Yeah, Nikki, uh, you know, Iran has uh, has American citizens um, illegally imprisoned, and so we're gonna go to a war with them. Yeah, well, uh, and because she's such a neocon anyway. She's, she's such a neocon, but at the same time. This is something that's always bothered me is that we'll let another country like take citizens like that. Mm -hmm. Like all it would take is one time to like, oh, you took some of our people. We are going to war till you set them free. Okay. Like to me, that's it. I mean, it's not perfect, but come on. Like if you're just going to. It's so much worse. Okay. Any one of those things would cost the U.S. taxpayer a hell of a lot more than this did. Yeah. And well, instead of five. Actually, 10, because yeah. we gave five Iranians back, too. Yeah. Instead of, this is what we should focus on. There are five Americans today that are free, that were not free two weeks ago, and were in Iranian prisons. Absolutely. This is a good thing. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> is a good thing. And I don't have anything against the five Iranians that we sent back there, either. So, well, no. you know I'm, what? I'm glad they're free, too. So there's 10 free people today that weren't free weeks ago. Yeah, That's what we should focus on. And any of those other alternatives means yeah. that there's either 10 people that are still in jail that, you know, may or may not have good reason to be. Like, okay, so let me tell you something else, too. Yeah. So the of the five Americans that were released, yeah. I'd wager that at least two of them actually were spies. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, okay. wouldn't you think? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, two out of five, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it would not surprise me one bit. In fact, my expectation would be that at least 40% of those people were actually doing were, what they were accused of doing. Yes. Yeah. Um, but even if not, um, the the other alternatives, you, you send special forces in to bust them out. Yeah. Now, maybe you've got five more free people. Yeah. Another how many people dead? dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, just guessing, but like, yeah, you're gonna lose folks in that effort. And how much does that special forces action cost? Oh yeah, wow. between getting them in, getting them out, getting everybody back home. Yeah, millions of dollars, yeah. I'm sure. Oh, without question. Um, and then so the last alternative, war. Yeah. How many people are dead then, and how much does that cost? Hell of a lot more than six billion dollars. Yeah. Even if it was taxpayer money that was going back to Iran, which it's not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think this is the best answer. I'm happy that this happened this way. I don't I mean I don't disagree. Like yeah. and um you know, the the other criticism that I heard over and over again was that uh Biden announced this on nine eleven. <laughs> yeah. And how disrespectful was that, that he would make a deal with Iran on 9-11, or announce a deal with Iran on 9-11? Well, first off, Iran had nothing to do well, with 9-11. Well, I was supposed to say, I mean, you didn't hear that Iran, they, like, they were in charge, they, like, they flew the planes. Right, like, right. <laughs> wait, no, that was somebody else. I think, I think it was... I think it was Saudi Arabia, that's, right? Uh, that, and, yeah. and Egypt had some part, but we're allies with them, so that's okay. Yeah, we'll let that slide. <laughs> um, so, yeah, Iran had nothing to do with 9-11 yeah. uh, to start with. And secondly, instead of saying that, that I can't believe Pearl Clutch about whether, him having the gall to announce a deal with a Muslim nation 
<laughs> yeah. Because that's what we're really that's, talking that's about. That's where, right? that's the truth, yeah. To make a deal or announce a deal with a Muslim nation on 9-11, why don't we say, hey, on 9-11, Joe Biden, or yeah, Joe Biden, I don't yeah. know why that sounded weird in my <laughs> ear when I said that. Yeah. Joe Biden announced that he just got five Americans freed and sent home. Yeah, Exactly. I don't think that that's disrespectful at all. <laughs> no, which is probably the reason he chose that day to do it. Because yeah. in his mind, that's or not his mind, but in his handler's mind, in his handler's mind, <laughs> yeah. like that was a. I mean, that's a win, right? Yeah, in the White House P- uh, PR office, that yeah. seemed like yeah, probably. Yeah. I mean, that would probably. be my guess. So, um, and then at the same time, uh, we have now. Do you know who Gonzalo Lira is? I don't. Okay. Gonzalo Lira is a uh, Ukrainian-American um, who was reporting on the war from Ukraine uh, at the beginning. Okay. And he was critical of the Zelensky admit, the Zelensky's handling of the war and um, was making the case that it was not an unprovoked attack. Yeah. And so he was arrested. Oh, wow. In Ukraine. Yeah. Another American citizen imprisoned yeah. for reporting yeah. from Ukraine. Um, then he, he was released for something, and he was trying to escape over the border, and he didn't make it, apparently, and was rearrested. For uh, trying to leave because he's a fighting age male? That's probably it, actually. I mean, that's, um, that's my understanding of what they're doing, so... We don't know for sure because we haven't heard anything else from him since he said he was going to try and get across the border. Okay. All right. Um, but the the U.S., I guess it was the State Department, um, just recently announced that they... Just confirmed that he is actually imprisoned in Ukraine. Again. Still. Still, I guess. Yeah. He, he's okay. not dead. He's imprisoned. Yeah. That's yeah. essentially what they're saying. Cause, okay. Because we didn't, I guess we didn't really know after his announcement that he was going to try and escape across the border what happened to him after that because we just hadn't heard anything. Gotcha. Um, okay. And so it, the I think it was the State Department that just confirmed. Anyway, it was a U.S. administrative agency yeah. that just confirmed that he is, in fact, imprisoned in Ukraine um, in, in violation of any idea of free press. Yeah. Because he's essentially imprisoned for supposedly taking up the Russian side, um, but really it's about speaking out against the the current the, government. Yeah, the existing administration there. So yeah, um, so that's the democracy that we're defending. <laughs> defending right in yeah. Ukraine, and uh, yeah, Zelensky was just here. Yeah, asking for money. He's yeah. like um, he's like a spoiled teenage girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know all that's about what, those. Yeah. That's what I've started thinking recently is that I was trying to think of an, like what what he's like. He's like a spoiled teenage girl that you've never given him enough. Yeah. And he hasn't earned anything that he's gotten. Yeah. And he'll say some nice things while at the same time. Asking for more. Asking for more and being kind of rude about it, like really yeah. entitled about yeah. it. Yeah. All right. That yeah. like that this isn't something that he's asking for. It's something he's demanding. Yeah. It drives me crazy. <laughs> it's very frustrating. And and and, and he's the- a liar. Oh, I'm so tired. So there was the reports of Oh gosh, what was it? Um I don't know. There was a a recent um missile attack on a uh on a civilian facility that immediately he was out there saying that the Russians attacked this place. And even the New York Times reported that, yeah, it turns out it was a Ukrainian air defense missile that landed there and <laughs> yeah. blew up Ukrainians. Yeah, which is why, partly at least why, this guy's so dangerous. Like, like yeah. he does not, like, nuclear war does not deter yeah. this guy. <laughs> he, is, he has no scruples. No, no, none at all. None. Um, and I... Holding him up as a hero drives me crazy. Yeah. He's just another politician. Well, yeah. And, or he's just another actor. I don't think a whole lot of them either. Yeah. I mean, I think he's more of an he's actor. He's a guy that lied for a living, and then he became a politician, and so he got, he got into the right career, I guess. But, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that really is kind of how I see him, though, as not... I mean, because he was an actor before he became 
a politician. And I think I really do feel like he's just kind of been put up there to play a role. And, you know, he's a lot of people at least think he's pretty good at it. Yeah. Well, there's a, a tremendous amount of propaganda here. Yeah. About how all of this is going. Yeah. So we're still we're still hearing some cracks are forming. Yeah. But we're still hearing that that the counteroffensive is going well. Yeah. And um, that they're pushing through the Russian lines slow, slower than we thought, but they're pushing <laughs> through the Russian defensive lines. And it's just not true. There's yeah. some places that yeah. were essentially not defended. Yeah. Where they are pushing ahead. Yeah. Um, but even, you know, just like last time, you think about, well, if they break through the Russian lines, then the somewhere in, in some place they break through the Russian lines. And then the, the report is, so now they're flanking the Russians. No, now they're surrounded by the Russians. <laughs> yeah, right. And there's just no, they weren't prepared for this. They didn't have the capability. We're getting reports now that, that the Pentagon knew it beforehand, before they set them off on this mission of the counteroffensive. Yeah. They knew that they didn't have the, the manpower or material to do it. Um, but they were hoping that the, you know, that the fighting spirit of the Ukrainians would be enough yeah, right. to make it happen. And, and they, like, we sent them on a suicide mission. Yeah. Yeah. Knowingly sent them on a suicide, wittingly. <laughs> and that, that's the word that we use in the press, right? Yeah. We, the, the U S government wittingly sent the Ukrainian military on a suicide mission to try and attack these Russian lines. These Russians were dug in, they were ready. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter how much stuff we give them. They, they would not have been able to succeed. Yeah. And it, it's not a matter of Zelensky saying, well, we didn't get the stuff to him quickly enough. Yeah. Um, if we had gotten the stuff to him earlier, they would have been fine. And that's just not true. They, just, they, this was, this was doomed to fail. Yeah. Just like the defense of Ukraine was doomed to fail. Once they, once they decided that they were really going to fight for it and Russia said, okay, well, if it's a war you want, yeah, we're we're moving past you know this military act special military. What did they call it at the beginning? Special, special military action. Special military action. I was thinking it was yeah. SMP, and I was trying to think of what the P stood for. Anyway, yeah. um, once they once they said, all right, well, we're activating reserves and we're yeah. turning our uh, attacking force of seventy thousand people into a, an attacking force of half a million. Yeah, it was over. Yeah, like. I mean, just looking at population, you know, it, it, Ukraine had something like 40 million people. They're down under 20 now, yeah. um, from what I understand. And I've heard estimates that they're down to like 14 million people. That's not yeah. all dead people, by the way. It's, a lot of it's just people fleeing the country. People who left, yeah. Um, but the Russian population is like 150 million. Yeah, right. <laughs> <clears throat> so let's let's say that they're five to ten times the size of Ukraine. Yeah. I don't know. You end up in a war of attrition. The bigger side is going to win. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah. it's just a numbers game. And, um, th this is really unfortunate too, because the Ukrainian military, well, Zelensky just doesn't know how to, he doesn't know how to back off. He needs yeah. a PR win. Yeah. So he's pushing the military to keep going. Keep yeah. going. Keep fighting this counteroffensive fight where at this point they've expended a lot of resources for very little gain. Yeah. Um, and what they should be doing is preparing for the counterattack by Russia because that's yeah. coming. Yeah. All right. And so instead of trying to continue to push forward when they know they can't get where they want to go, they should be like, fortified. This has failed. Yeah. They should fall back, fortify, and prepare their own defensive lines for when the Russians yeah. attack. As it is, I've. I just, my anticipation is that in the winter, the Russians are just going to roll across southern Ukraine. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing that can be done by the Ukrainians to stop them. Even if they have a half dozen Abrams tanks? Yeah. And a half dozen uh, F-16s. Yeah. Not going to be enough. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not going to be enough. And, um, and then what happens, what happens next? Well, that, that's the first question of what happens next is like when Russia turns around and says, all right, it's time. Yeah. Yeah. We're moving forward now. Yeah. Our turn. Yeah. Um, 
I, I that's my anticipation is what of what happens next on the Ukrainian side that yeah. they just get rolled across southern Ukraine. Yeah. Um, that uh, then the media Russia flips. takes Odessa. Russia take uh, like maybe Russia you know connects all the way across to Transnistria. Yeah. I don't know, but um, I think that there's going to be a lot more territory lost. Yeah. By Ukraine. Yeah. And um, and then what what happens here though when yeah. you can no longer hide the fact that Ukraine's losing this? We pivot to China. Well, that that's my greatest fear. I mean, that I do think that's the play. Like, I think that's what's yeah. going to happen. That's at the top of my list of the worst possible outcomes. Yeah. Um, is that they, they think that, well, well, we just need a war we can win, and mm-hmm. they think that's China for some reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, there's other alternatives there. Uh, all right, just sticking with the Ukraine part, how does the U.S. deal with the loss? Um, I think... First thing is that they redefine the terms. Yeah. They're like, yep, we stopped Russia and Ukraine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Russia didn't take any NATO territory just like we wanted. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, we, we fought well and stopped them in Ukraine. And well, so they somehow turn this into a win. Maybe. Or they just throw it down the memory hole like none of this happened. Well, we just focus on something else entirely, on the assassination of Donald Trump or whatever it happens to be. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, some big event to get to everybody change, refocused to on story. something else. Yeah, change and then the narrative. Never talk about Ukraine again. Yeah. Well, there is no never talk about Ukraine again because what will end up happening is we will never recognize any Russian gains as far as Ukraine's concerned. Like we'll just could, the same way as with Crimea where we never recognized like we just we will just say it's disputed territory. Yeah. Um yeah. Could be. And and there's a history for this because we're in the, North Korea. I was fixing to say yeah. North Korea is like the gleaning example of I mean, we're still in the armistice there. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and the US still doesn't recognize North Korea as an independent nation. Exactly. Yeah. So the the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so so I mean like we're we're fully capable of doing this. <laughs> that, that's true. Um the the thing that really drives me crazy about this is why I think Anthony Blinken is the worst Secretary of State since uh, Foster Dulles. Um, and I will remind people again, Hillary Clinton is between Foster <laughs> Dulles and Anthony Blinken. Yeah, all right. No. <laughs> um, we've we've had some bad ones. She's just oh, gosh, uh, the Libya debacle is still gonna stay. I mean. Yeah. There's still slave markets in Libya now because of... Yeah. Anyway. Thanks to Hillary Clinton. Yeah. In large part, I would say. Yeah. Um, but Anthony Blinken is still out there saying, you know, there, we need no negotiations. We, we will not stand negotiations. And I, I think, like, how else... Okay. Short of genocide. Yeah. Like, utter genocide. How else does a war end? Yeah. Like, there's no other way that a war ends except through negotiation. Yeah. Why would you... So you should well, start negotiations sooner rather than later. Like, it may, take, it may take a long time to come to an agreement that everybody can think, be satisfied with. I think one war ended without negotiations. What's World that? World War II, when we bombed China or uh, Japan with the, with the nukes. No, it still required negotiations. Not to much. Sign. I mean, it I was mean, a pretty... S- pretty like one-sided negotiation once sure. we hit a couple of their cities. Like I said, short of genocide. Yeah. Okay. Well, you did. You did paraphrase. Okay. <laughs> you, you did. Yeah. But that's. But literally, like I do believe. No, it like, still required negotiations, though. I mean, like there was still a, a signing of a peace treaty and but so forth. I think, like that's I think just what he's getting at is like he wants. We allowed them to keep the emperor he, and everything. Like there was there he, was definitely like some give and some take give in and that take. agreement. Yeah. But I, I think that's that's like the level that they're looking for, though, is that yeah. is that type of just like. But if they think Ukraine's going to do that to Russia, like, what are they smoking? <laughs> I'm telling you, I don't know. But that's I'm telling you, that's what they're looking for, though. They're looking for such a dominant victory that that they basically have to make no concessions or little to none. Yeah. And that and that's <laughs> the reason there's this push for no negotiations. Well, the truth is that at right now, yeah, Russia has no incentive to negotiate anyway. Well, yeah, they're they're dominating this. Yeah, 
Like they have it well in hand. They're well, going to take more territory. They're not losing as many people. They have the industrial base to support it. Well, like, and they're essentially um, eliminating a frontline NATO force. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, not the people, but the equipment. But the equipment, yeah. No, absolutely. Um, and it doesn't get any brighter when you look at it from our side because mm-hmm. the the politicians, the people who are kind of pulling the levers here, are more than happy to keep pouring all of this money in there. Mm-hmm. Like this is we've talked about the the cycle of how the money works. You know, yeah. Um, there's plenty of people benefiting this off off this enough that there's no incentive on our side to stop. Yeah. You know, I mean, you've got a handful of senators and Republicans that are kind of like saying something here, but it's not a, enough of a majority to stop this, at least not right now. Yeah. And uh, Raytheon and what's the jet one? Um, uh, Northrop Grumman. No, Northrop Grumman is always the one that comes to my head, but that's not yeah. I, it's the one that I can't ever think of the name of. Uh, anyway, yeah. Raytheon and the other one yeah. are making bank off of this. Well, yeah, of course they are. Um, and all of the people, the politicians who are supporting this are doing the same. Yeah. Like oh, yeah. They'll get their, their they'll get um, their donations. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And their cushy little job when they leave Congress. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking events and all. Like, it's the, the money's flowing. Yeah. You know. Um, and the only, I would say the only real shining light I see is the fact that McCarthy did not allow... Um, Zelensky to speak in front of Congress. Um, and that at least says something to the fact that there's enough Republicans that are starting to get enough of this that McCarthy knew he couldn't just allow that to happen. Yeah, it's it's a small group, but it's a vocal group, and it's a group that is at least enough with the Democrat opposition to anything that the Republicans do to, to shift votes. Yeah. To, like, f- cause things to fail. Yeah. Um, mostly Freedom Caucus guys, as yeah. I understand it. Yeah. But uh, but back to your original point, the like scary possible end to this is that a lot of the Republicans that are opposed to continuing to fund the Ukraine war only want to stop funding the Ukraine war because they think that money should be spent on a war with China. Because they want to pivot to China. Yeah. Exactly. Which is, yeah. <laughs> now, and how would you, <laughs> like, I don't even understand the logic here. Like, okay. Our funding and arming of a proxy war with Russia failed, so we need a win. Let's fight China? Well, it's, In the it's, South China Sea? Does not, that seem like a good plan? It's not <laughs> even like so much we need a win. It's that, and I do think at least a lot of these people believe it, that they think China's that type of threat. Well, I mean, the Biden administration will need a win after a loss in Ukraine. Well, yeah. I mean, maybe like you think they're still going to be in power a year from now, two years from now. Well, because I, mean, I don't, I don't see this I don't thing. Think it's on, gonna, I don't think it's going to take that long for it to be clear to the to American become a problem. people yeah. that this is a loss, though. Uh, maybe. Like the the war may continue beyond that, yeah. but I don't think that it'll be till yeah. uh, past the election before it's it, it can't be hidden. Yeah. that Ukraine has lost this and that we have failed in supporting Ukraine well, against and Russia. I, and I know that you know this as well as I do, but the people, there's a lot of, like, like pe- our people, I say our people, but just like regular people, they're like all in on this idea that, that Russia's just been decimated through this. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I don't, I'm kind of in the middle on this as personally. I know um, you may disagree a little bit and you know a little more than I do, but... Like, I mean, I think Russia's been hurt here, but... It's been costly, sure. Yeah, but I don't think that they've been decimated in the way... And I think that's going to be a kind of... As as it becomes more and more um, obvious, I think for a lot of people in this country, that's going to kind of be a shock. Yeah. Because there's... I mean, there's a lot of smart people out there that are like, oh, dude, Russia's done. Like, their they're, they're, they're fighting force is gone, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, no, they have the biggest military they've had... Well, and I, I absolutely years. agree with that, except for, I'm just, my point though is that what what does that mean kind of for the coming elections if if that does become more and more obvious as we get closer? And there's mm-hmm. a lot of people who are like, like, what the hell? Like, I didn't, like, how did we not see this coming? Like, yeah. that kind of thing. 
Like, well, and where and, does where does that kind of shift people to? You know, I, I don't know. I um, I hope it's just people into voting for a third party. It could. <laughs> well, no, and and like I know you laugh and you kind of say that in jest, but like that's not like that radical of a thing. Yeah. Or or it could just mean, and like I say, obviously that's the best case scenario that it shifts mm. them to a third party. Um, but. Even if it doesn't, what does that mean for the, because I mean, we're still primaried up here. Like, what does that mean for the Republican, the Democrat that comes out of a primary? Yeah. Like, I mean, what kind of, I mean, we could end up with anything, you know? Well, with Trump saying that he's going to end the war in 24 hours, and I'm, I'm going to um, quote Max Blumenthal's response to that and say, I, I think it'll take a little longer than that, but I like his spirit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we, we, can't forget that Trump, Trump's administration created the biggest escalation of this conflict yeah. before it happened, yeah. um, which was giving weapons to Ukraine. Yeah, and and we can't forget that he like he's a big part of preparing this whole thing or stepping towards a an actual hot war. Yeah, over this dispute. Yeah. Um, well, and, the- and of course, Biden went all in on it. And I, to respond, so I was uh, I was talking with a good friend of mine not that long ago, and we started arguing over this. And he was saying that well, Putin invaded Ukraine because he doesn't think Ukraine should exist. He doesn't think it's a real country. It's just all a part of Russia and so on. And I was arguing the point that no, it was about NATO expansion. Yeah, that Putin had been saying the same thing since two thousand eight. At least, at least, right? Um, about NATO expansion, that he had legitimate security concerns, yeah, um, and that he was concerned about an alliance that was built to counter the Soviet Union, moving closer and closer to the Russian border, and uh, and putting their military equipment right there, yeah, and that this was a problem, and that they needed to discuss this. They needed to have a real talk about you know russian security concerns which i think are not unreasonable yeah and i go back to it every time but put the shoe on the other foot yeah. what if russia was putting military equipment in cuba yeah like i mean seriously like how would even we even though it, it, and it, it was just a mutual defense alliance yeah oh this is all defensive equipment yeah um and so the recently though uh yen stoltenberg who's the head of the head of nato talked about it and I'm really just kind of wedging this in there so that we can get this clip in. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to paraphrase cause he's kind of hard to understand. Um, his, his accents thick, but we'll play the clip and then uh, I'll summarize. Okay. President Putin declared autumn of 2021 and he actually sent a, a draft treaty that he wanted NATO to sign to promise no more NATO enlargement. That was what, what he sent us. And that was that. That was a precondition for not invade uh, 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 Ukraine. Of course, we didn't sign that. The opposite happened. He wanted us to sign a promise never to enlarge NATO. He wanted us to remove our military infrastructure in in all allies that have joined NATO since 1997, meaning half of NATO, all the Central and Eastern Europe. We should remove NATO uh, from from that part of uh, of our alliance introducing some kind of E and B, or second-class membership. We rejected that. So he went to war to prevent uh, uh, NATO, uh, more NATO close to his borders. He has, he, he has got the exact opposite. Okay, I can't understand when exactly he's saying that it happened. April, August, autumn, I don't know. Something like that. Something like that. Yeah. Um, 2021. Yeah. That Putin said... Um, I, I have legitimate security concerns and we need to talk about NATO expansion and I don't, I want an agreement. Here's my proposal that you no longer, that you don't expand NATO any further. Yeah. And that we want you to remove your military equipment from all of the NATO countries that have been added since 1997. Yeah. Which Yin says is half of NATO. So half of NATO was added to NATO in Eastern and Central Europe after the agreement with uh, Gorbachev that NATO that it wouldn't, wouldn't move expand east, yeah, yeah. So, which is crazy, like <laughs> when you understand the history of it. Yeah, 
Um, and then, uh, so Yin said, uh, so we rejected that out of hand. Yeah. I mean, he didn't say that exactly, but he says we I mean, rejected well, that. Well, no, he did say that pretty much that though. Yeah. yeah. That. And, uh, and then Russia invaded Ukraine. Well, and, and what, oh, go ahead. All I was going to say is, is what's crazy here. The fact that, I mean, because he, he may not use those exact words, but his point was that that was a non-starter that that mm-hmm. was never going to be never going to happen and fair enough but you at least have to have the conversation and negotiate it and i yeah. think i think this in, could be a starting point I, a proposal well, was sent to us by russia we don't agree with this proposal but this is our alternative yeah like well, let's come to an agreement here because we don't want you to invade ukraine but the thing yeah. is they didn't care no is in, in fact i think on many levels this is what they wanted yeah at least what it's at least what the U.S. wanted. Now, whether or not it's what the other NATO countries wanted, well, is and we know that up for due debate. to U.S. funding, uh, uh, essentially of NATO, that yeah. U.S. directs NATO. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. So, it, it you know it, what what the U.S. wants is what NATO wants. Yeah. Well, <laughs> essentially, I mean, I guess that's true. Yeah. Um, but it, it's just. Just think about how disrespectful that is to Russia to be to, for to Russia to come to you and have like legitimate concerns and things that they want addressed, and that that the response is, well, we're not even going to discuss it. Mm-hmm. Like we're not even going to entertain the idea of making any changes. You're just going to have to suck it up and deal with it. Yeah. Um, and I'll go and back so to so what it. did he do? He sucked it up and he dealt with it. Well, yeah. And that's exactly what's going on here. Not I just, don't think once, it was the best Once plan, again, but. not justifying the war, mm-hmm. but but at least understanding the reasons for the war. Yeah. Um, so, and this whole, but one thing there is that Yens says point blank that Russia invaded Ukraine over NATO expansion. Yeah. Well, there is an admission there that you won't hear or get, generally speaking, from the mainstream media. Yeah. Um, and it's just that, the fact that that is the reason for this war. And it's not that Russia is trying to take over Europe. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> you yeah. know, because that's that's what you hear is like, and that's Zelensky's whole argument. The reason he comes in here so demanding for money mm-hmm. is because his argument is, is well, if, if Ukraine falls, so does everybody else. Yeah. Like we're the first, we're the first domino to fall. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's this an is an old argument too. And it didn't, it wasn't correct the first time and it's not correct this time. Well, the old domino theory turned out to be BS the first time in the 1960s, yeah. 50s, I guess is where it started. And it's, it's still BS. Yeah. Well, it, particularly in this, there is no evidence. <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> there is no evidence that the domino theory holds any water. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and there's just, I mean, this guy isn't, I don't know. There's just, that's not what the ambitions are here. And mm-hmm. anybody who looks at the history, it's plain as day. It's, it's just what it is like. And what he said is correct. Mm-hmm. Um, so there you go. Yeah. Well, and, uh, if we do want to shift, um, to the, the next thermonuclear power in yeah. China, um, there was a Pentagon study that just came out recently that said, uh, 77% of young Americans, um, would be DQ'd on the physical for military service. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> well, well, that's with the current standards. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Providing we go to war, we dumbing some of that down. We'll get to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, seventy-seven percent of uh, of Americans between seventeen and twenty-four, I think, was the was the range. Yeah, um, would be DQ'd on the physical, uh, mostly um, due to obesity. Yeah. Drug use, uh, psychological or physical health issues. Wow. Man, like even beyond just the implications of the defending our country uh, aspect of that. Like how, the, how depressing is that? Yeah, the physical like, and mental health of uh, <laughs> Americans is bad. Is not good, dude. Um, <laughs> and on top of that, uh, only 9% yeah. of the that same group of people want to serve. Well, yeah. <laughs> and that's even more of a problem. And a, a lot of people see that as a lack of patriotism. Maybe. I, I mean, that's that's probably a part of it. My argument is that if we hadn't spent, you know, roughly 30 years 
uh, fighting wars that a majority of people at this point see as completely unnecessary. Yeah. yeah. That um, that people might be more willing to to serve. Well, and we've watched uh, we've watched our U.S. servicemen come home just maimed and disfigured mm-hmm. from a war that pretty well universally is recognized as just for nothing. Yeah. Um, and there's there's something to that when yeah. the fact that you start looking at, well, everybody knows somebody that came back from Iraq mm-hmm. that just was just had their life destroyed from their time there um, for a war that we know was fruitless. Yeah. Like, I mean, what and, and we're kind of dealing with some of the aftermath of what a society looks like after something like that. Um, I mean, and there's a lot of people that still pull the levers of power who just don't don't recognize it and don't see it. Well, okay, so but there's an upside. Yep. And that is that what we've seen in the Russia-Ukraine war is that um, war is being fought increasingly by drones. Yeah. And so we can take these fat, anxious, diabetic people and <laughs> video game put players. A, put a video game controller in front of them and <laughs> And they'll be able to fight just fine. And they'll yeah, well, there's there's definitely something to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, give them some weed and you know, like <laughs> we we know they like it because of the drug results. <laughs> a two liter of orange shasta and they're like ready to go. Oh man. That, that creates such a picture in my head. Like, I just I don't even know how to respond. <laughs> well, that seems like a good place to end then. Yeah. Um, all right. So, I don't, well, there was one more thing I just wanted to kind of throw out there oh, as damn, far as... That was such a good place to... Right, it, go really, it really was, but <laughs> I, I feel like I'd be remiss. Um, so, because we talked about... Trump kind of being the one that's that he's positioned himself as the anti-war. He'd end it in 24 hours or whatever. Yeah. What I want the Trump voters to remember is that, yes, I mean, I believe him when he says, yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe not 24 hours, but I do believe he'd be pulling out of Ukraine. Yeah. Um, don't forget, he's going to pivot to China. Yeah. Like, and that's an that's important true. thing to remember is that he's just because he's he has the right position on Ukraine does not mean he has the one, right one with China. He doesn't even have the right position on Ukraine. He's just held his finger in the air, and that's the direction he thinks the wind's blowing. Fair enough, but he, um, because in in order to fight off all the Russia Russian puppet stuff. Yeah. You know, the, that mythology, the, the hoax around Russia Gate. Yeah. Um, he was sanctioning Russia and threatening Russia. And like he was he was one of the worst in policy towards Russia. Yeah. Uh, during his time in office, while at the same time he was being accused of being a traitor. <laughs> yeah. Which is <laughs> astonishing. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, no, I just I don't. Like the the deal with China really worries me, and like I say, for for just barely China. China, yeah, and and when it at least to me it seems like when it comes to China, like like he's a real believer in they're the problem. Yeah. Like I mean, if you listen to him going back to the nineties, he was <clears> talking <throat> about China. Um, so w- w- at least you got to take him for his word at that one. Yeah. You know. Well, and just. You know, another point that I, an economic point that I make is that it's not dollars that make you wealthy, it's things. Yeah. And we're sending dollars to China and getting things. We're getting the best end of this deal. The The idea of starting an economic war, which Trump did do. Which he did, yeah. Um, against China is just a terrible idea for the average American. Like, yeah. we don't want to bring this stuff back here because yeah. they do it cheaper there. And yeah. if we bring it back here... It's going to cost more. It's Everything will cost more. And it already cost more. So yes. we don't need to... I mean, you want to talk about really sending us down a spiral? Yeah, and what's really going to happen then? All right, so we have to reintroduce all this manufacturing in the U.S. Where does the money to start all that up Man, come from? Uh, it's. I it, bet the government prints a bunch of money to get all that started if we actually cut off oh, yeah. uh, you know, China imports or whatever. In order to restart those industries here, the government would be printing so much money to get them started again. And then it would just drive up prices even more. Yeah. You know, starve us all to death. Yeah. It's, I tell you, man, it's a, it's a very scary scenario. Yeah. So. The well, idea that they think they can fix this is just... By yeah. doing something. Yeah, right. Like, please stop doing things. <laughs> You're <laughs> yes. not helping us. <laughs> Laissez-faire, man. Like, yeah. that's the way to go. Like, yeah. 
It can it can be done. The lazy fair. Yeah. All right. Um, so nothing scheduled, I don't think. Nothing I know of. Sorry. So um, so we'll be back next week without any problems, I believe. Yeah. Uh, and in the meantime, you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, YouTube, Podbean. Uh, like and share, comment, uh, leave um, reviews, uh, tell yeah. your friends. Bust us um, out of that shadow ban, man. Get us back in the feed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> they don't like us, man. Like, um, just saying. Tell your friends. Uh, you can always email me if with comments, questions, um, things that you want me to talk about, uh, whatever. Yeah. Say hello. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> All right. Um, you can email me at michael at the liberty And uh, you can, of course, visit the website there. Um, I still have the Substack going, although I haven't posted in like, oh, I didn't post last week because I was traveling. So you're going to double up this week, right? Uh, <laughs> no, I wasn't really writing either. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, you know, I was hanging out with family. And, oh, yeah. No, I get it, man. Uh, I did take one night and just watch this weird movie. <laughs> yeah. Um, and and I, watched a, I watched a full football game. Oh, yeah? Well, almost full. I didn't. I guess I didn't watch the whole thing because we got to it late. Oh, uh, yeah. But watched almost a full football game for the first time in I don't know how many years. Who did you watch? Saints. Monday uh, Night Football. Monday Night. Oh, Monday Night Football. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, so I watched the Saints game. Yeah, and the Saints won. All Who right. Did? So, so now you have to watch them all. <laughs> no, no, because that, that that's because that's how that works. <laughs> it, it was a fluke because I was there with my brother and my mother, who are both huge sports fans. Uh, uh, um, and I, you know, it's not like I didn't used to watch. I just I have better things to do with my time, generally speaking. I so, hear you. You know, I just I just kind of lost interest. I get it. And I'm not even going to say it's because the Saints aren't any good anymore. Uh, they are 2-0, uh, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, but They've made some moves this year. Gonna, but I grew up watching decent. the Saints when, man, a 6-10 and 10 season was a great season. It was a good year. Yeah. 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 So it's not, I'm not a Fairweather fan or anything. I just, yeah. Um, just, I don't know, just, just don't have as interest. much interest anymore. Like, there's just other things that, I have limited time. Yeah. And to spend, you know, three hours every Sunday watching a game, just, I just don't have it. I'd rather, I'd rather do other things with that time. Yeah. I usually watch two on Sunday. So yeah, <laughs> I just, and how much do you watch on Saturday? I uh, usually one. Okay. Another one on Thursday. I watch a lot of football. Mm. <laughs> mm. Now, now that you like lay it out that way, I didn't really look at it that way before. <laughs> yeah. I'd still go to games. I mean, games are fun to go to, yeah. uh, but I just don't. I just don't care enough to watch it on TV. I get it. And I don't have cable anyway. I guess you don't really need it anymore. But you, yeah, a lot of it's streaming. Yeah, which sucks, by the way. Get me on the whole tangent on that. All right. Well, <laughs> let's skip that. We'll save that for later. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. So yeah, we'll be back next week, just like football. Yeah. Uh, when we finally get this right, just like no. Um. <laughs> and in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later.